Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeffrey Halley. I'm a senior market analyst here at Oanda in Asia Pacific in sunny Singapore. And this is the weekly uh, gold, uh, precious metals and commodities uh, video. We're going to run through precious metals, energy, and then over to the softs where we've had a bit of a grain again uh, event last Friday, which is very interesting. We'll have a look at everything and I'll give you my thoughts um, on the world in general and uh, and uh, where we're seeing each of these particular um, products that you can uh, trade on the Oanda platform. Let's crack straight into it and start with gold. Uh, very uh, interesting price action over the last couple of days as we see this, uh, this rally appearing to uh, come to an end up here in the top right hand corner. Let's just move this out a bit, shall we? And squish it up a bit. There we go. Righty ho. So what's been going on here? Well, gold has rallied on a weaker US dollar and uh, obviously a lot of the um, tension and geopolitics around the world at the moment, most particularly between uh, the United States and um, North Korea, where we are seeing uh, a procession of daily chest thump thumping uh, by both sides, which has raised the, the heat around the world and uh, has uh, increased risk aversion, which is always good for gold. So we saw here on Friday that bull rally uh, continued. Uh, and I think what we saw here was um, traders buying gold as a hedge against any weekend uncertainty. Sure enough, as soon as Friday, uh, Monday's rolled around, uh, we've seen some initial selling of gold um, as uh, those hedges are taken off, but it's actually continued lower overnight and into today. So what's been going on? Well, for a start, we had some uh, weaker data out of Europe and China yesterday. It's gone quite quiet on, um, on the geopolitical front. Uh, Kim Il-jong uh, came out today and said he wasn't going to shoot some missiles uh, into the waters around Guam, which was very kind of him. Uh, the market's generally taken this quite positively in Asia. And what we've seen is a stronger US dollar. And uh, as a consequence of that and the lowering of tensions, for now, um, uh, gold, uh, gold retreating. The key level here still remains though, this uh, 1296 region. And although uh, gold has fallen in the last couple of days, I do feel that a lot of this has got to do with perhaps short term stale long positioning. And we can see down here that the RSI went to an overbought level uh, running into the end of the week as well. So I think this is more of a clean out of uh, short term positioning rather than any structural change in the price of gold. We can see here that it's been uh, dancing with uh, initial support at 1275. Uh, the key levels up here around this 1292 level, 1293, which was uh, last week's high on Friday. But this is the key level here, this 1296 region, where we have one, two, three, just about three uh, tops in, in that area from uh, April to June. And if we're going to talk about gold on a, uh, on a 1300 handle um, as a more of a long term uh, positioning or uh, where it result, resolve price wise, then this level here, this 1296 region has to break and we need to see some consolidation above it. Traders themselves, longer term bulls though, I think uh, will not be worried about the short term correction in gold uh, unless we see this red line here, the 100 day moving average get broken and we see a close under this level and uh, that's way down here at around uh, 1255 at the moment uh, and so we're still a good $20 away from that level. So I do tend to think that this is more to do with an adjustment of short term positioning rather than uh, a structural change in the gold market itself. Let's talk about uh, silver now. Let's race over to silver. And what we're seeing in the precious metal setup actually is um, some less than salubrious uh, price action um, in some of the other precious metals. And perhaps they've led gold a little bit. And we can see here this longer, this medium term uptrend here, quite a steep line. If we just uh, maybe fatten this out a little bit, squash this up. We broke out of this level probably at the end of the week before last when I was away in New Zealand um, and we've consolidated, consolidated underneath it. Interestingly, if we can see around here around the 17.25 area, which I've marked as uh, sort of, um, I think that would be Thursday's high, it's sort of failed again once it's broken through. It's been through the level, gone back up again and it's failed to actually regain this initial support line which now becomes resistance. Now today that level will be around the 17.6 region. 
Um, but for now, 17.25, where it has failed uh, twice now, um, remains quite substantial uh, resistance. We are flirting with support down around the 1684, 1685 region, and we do seem to be dilly-dallying around these very, very compressed uh, 100 and 200 day moving averages. A break of this line uh, at around 1684 uh, 80, and a half um, would imply that we would move down towards this previous low in early August around 16.137 uh, here. So often silver does actually lead the price action in gold, and this may imply that we still have a correction left in the short term long positioning uh, in precious metals. Whether this is a structural change or not, I do have my doubts, and that will be a question that will no doubt be answered uh, at a later date. Popping over to platinum. And again, we're seeing the same sort of setup. Uh, we saw a plunge yesterday uh, as uh, the US dollar rallied um, after soft Chinese and European data. Uh, and we've broken through the support uh, line here at 968.33. I have it on my chart here. This now becomes a resistance. More importantly, uh, we've uh, fallen again and we actually appear to be consolidating underneath it. The key levels though for uh, platinum and as you can see, actually, if I digress for a moment, although we have been in a big uh, sort of 900, 1050 range, actually, when you look over the course of 2017, as we can see here, it has actually been a more of a sideways movement. So platinum really hasn't been following gold uh, to the top side as uh, the US dollar has got weaker. And I suspect that is because of this whipsaw price action where traders who have gone long platinum have been quite badly burnt. Um, as it, it drifts up but then gives back all its gains on those rallies in the space of, well, just a few days. So I think positioning is lighter and thus the moves are magnified. This uh, zone here between the 200 day and the 100 day moving average, uh, 940, 951, is a key support area. And if we hold this area, technically we can see the possibility of another move higher, but uh, if we break this area and close below it, on a more medium term basis, then we could be in for uh, a correction back to this longer term support here, the bottom of this range, uh, which is around 889 and a half. If we go over to palladium, which I call the precious metal that keeps on giving. Now, as I've said before, palladium has a dual industrial use as well as being a precious metal. It's used mostly in catalytic converters and uh, motor vehicles. Uh, to clean out all those uh, noxious uh, diesel fumes um, and, and, and petrol fumes. And this means that palladium tends to march to its own beat rather than just following mindlessly the, uh, the other precious metals. And as we can see here, it has been on uh, what I can only describe as the mother of all bull runs since uh, at least September last year, October, September, October last year. This long-term support line, as I've previously mentioned, has come nowhere near being tested at all uh, in the last uh, year or so. We can see that we're in this giant wedge pattern, long-term resistance around this 918 region, uh, and this ascending wedge um, yeah, continues to perform quite strongly. And as we can see, palladium itself has not even remotely uh, moved lower along with uh, silver and gold and uh, platinum. And this just uh, reinforces the power of this uh, bullish trend from a technical basis. In fact, it would probably take a move all the way down through the 100 day moving average here at around uh, today 835, this support line at 828.4. Um, and of course this long term support line here, which today sits around sort of the 812 mark, it would take probably that sort of uh, power of move down through those levels to uh, start changing traders' views on, uh, on Palladium. And as we can see, even the RSI itself as well, is just bubbling along at around the uh, 60 level. So there's nothing to see here either, ladies and gentlemen, please move along. Let's pop over while we're talking industrial metals to copper. Copper and uh, palladium flow nicely together for the purposes of this, uh, this conversation. And again, we can see, and this is a very interesting uh, facet, the industrial metals are not moving in tandem with precious metals. So there's definitely some other price uh, drivers out there in the market with this. 
Um, the Chinese data was a bit softer yesterday, but notably copper has not fallen uh, on this at all. It does seem to be consolidating in the upward uh, bounds of this again ascending wedge shape. Key support here is around 286.00, uh, 286.05. And then we have the support line here, uh, which um, actually comes in today at around about the same level. So you could actually say 286 is the key level here for copper, and uh, it's just a little hard to be thinking bearishly unless we get a daily close below this line. Up above, and I have got the charts uh, blown up so we can't see everything uh, in the longer term history, but we can see around here 296.5 is the key level to the top side. Actually, if we just move that back uh, more to get a better picture of that. And then, of course, the longer term support is where these two uh, 100 and 200 day uh, moving averages are converging. It's still actually quite a long way away around the 262, 264 level. But otherwise, from a technical perspective, uh, copper itself um, seems to be holding up remarkably well. And that perhaps is a reflection of uh, the general feeling about the, the world economy, despite all these ructions that are, appear to be going on around the world at the moment. That's enough for metals at the time. Let's move over to uh, some of the energy sectors. Natural gas, something that people say I produce a lot of when I do these commentaries, but uh, I prefer not to think of it that way. I prefer to think of it that you're getting something useful out of this. We are actually still in this ascending wedge. This breakout here uh, turned out to be a, a bit of a false break. We've consolidated uh, underneath it and then regained this longer term support line, which today comes in at around uh, the 289.70 level. Um, the market does appear though to be consolidating for a breakout. Now I really am not 100% sure about which way that will actually break out, but we can see here the wedge is getting narrower and narrower and the trading range for natural gas is getting narrower and narrower as well. Will it come out to the bottom? Will it explode to the top, so to speak? Let's hope not. Um, it's still too early to say. On the top side, um, we appear to have a, uh, a, a pivot point uh, around this uh, 309.60 region that I've talked about. And on the downside, uh, where this line's coming in today, it comes in around 2.90, and that will be a, uh, a pivot point uh, for the downside. So a close on a daily basis above here um, would imply that we could uh, see a test higher. A close to below this trend line now um, uh, would imply that we could retest these lows at 276, and then possibly down to this longer term support around 253.20. But I'm not 100% sure at the moment about, um, about the direction. Although I do note that uh, beneath, beneath the uh, 200 and the 100 day moving averages, the price action seems to be taking place a lot more below this level. Um, and perhaps that way may give us a clue. Let's move over to uh, the oils, crude oil. Let's start with Brent. Been a bit of a, an emotional uh, roller coaster yet again for oil, um, as is its want um, on the volatility stakes. And we can see here over the last couple of days, let's just uh, widen this chart out so that we can uh, get a better uh, view of the old price action here. We can see that we've had a, a big down day yesterday. We've been sort of consolidating, bouncing off this 200 day moving average for the last sort of week and a half. And then all of a sudden we've broken through overnight. A couple of reasons for that uh, have been expounded. One of them is a uh, decrease in the North Korean tensions. And I will say that I have seen journalists last week uh, writing that, um, that uh, uh, oil had come off because uh, geopolitical tensions were increasing around the Pen uh, Korean Peninsula. Um, I just have to say this is completely wrong. A war is never bearish for oil. I will say that again. A war is never bearish for oil. Uh, and that's just uh, self-explanatory and common sense. So um, if we were to see another rise in those tensions again, that could be uh, supportive for oil. I think actually what's going on here though, is that yet again, we're consolidating after a good run higher. And if you look at the commitment of traders report that came out for, um, it's backward looking by a week for the 8th of August. Um, we saw a huge, huge increase in speculative long positioning. Those poor hedge funds have gone long probably for the third or fourth time uh, this year. It clear, it's clear to me now that uh, they've uh, gone long 
um, and then we've run out of uh, new impetus to, uh, to take our oil to the top side. And so we've got a bit of stale positioning here. When the 200 day moving average broke, that probably triggered a few stop losses. Um, we've been down to the 100 day moving average, this red line, and we just seem to be uh, consolidating around it at the moment. That, uh, that uh, 100 day moving average is at 50.55 today. Um, and that will be sort of an intraday uh, pivot. Um, we're just flirting uh, above uh, that line at the moment by about 10 cents. Um, it's also uh, around the area of this 50% Fibonacci retrace, this green line, um, which comes in around uh, 50.70. Uh, so basically, this is actually a fairly important support zone, this 50.5, 50.70. And a daily close below here would imply, initially at least, a move towards 49.70, and then possibly a deeper correction towards 48.5. Now, does this mean that the oil market is structurally um, being proven wrong again and that we're not going to see oil uh, move higher? I think it's far too early to say that. If you look at the futures curves, the contango after many, many years is narrowed to almost flat, almost backwardation. Without going into too many details, that's usually a very bullish indicator of the forward supply of oil and for oil prices. So oil prices would normally be firmer in a backwardation uh, futures market where the price of oil for future delivery is lower than the price of oil for immediate delivery. I think this is actually, for now, probably a reflection of stale long-term positioning and traders not willing to really hold uh, too much risk or um, have out of, out of the market, uh, out of the money positioning. Um, so a lack of deep pockets, nervous traders, stale long positioning. Nothing to see here with the RSI either. Let's pop over to its big brother, or little brother, depending on your point of view. Uh, West Texas Intermediate. Again, we're seeing the same sort of setup. Unfortunately for WTI, uh, which is much more heavily traded from a speculative point of view than, um, than uh, Brent, we have actually broken through, uh, we've, we've broken through the 100 day moving average down here at uh, 47.83, sort of 85. But interestingly, the rally after it fell uh, late last week held the 200 day moving average here at 49.16. Um, that would be perhaps construed as a, a fairly bearish technical development. I do feel the same dynamics are going on here. We've had a huge run to the top side. We've run out of momentum. The commitment of traders report is showing a lot of speculative longs. Uh, and maybe they're just getting a bit of itchy feet as the dollar has rallied over the last couple of days uh, following um, Europe and China's uh, softer data and as um, uh, we've seen a, a drop in geopolitical tensions. Um, if I have a look through this, we can see that uh, this uh, 47.20 is the first uh, major support and a daily close below here would probably imply that we are going to see a deeper correction. I would actually um, say though that uh, just because we're washing out uh, short-term stale positioning, in this case long positioning, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're actually seeing a structural turn in oil. Having said that, I must add, um, it's hard to actually foresee oil around the 60 to 70 level uh, either uh, anytime soon. So perhaps uh, $50 to $60 could be the new norm uh, as we go into the latter part of the year. For those intraday traders, this 100 day moving average uh, will be uh, intraday uh, resistance around this 47.85 level. But a break here could definitely imply that we're going to have a bit more pain for those uh, poor souls who uh, bought oil up and around this uh, 49.50 area. That's enough of me talking about oil. I've given you the good oil. Let's move over to some of the softs. And uh, it's been uh, pretty emotional here over the last uh, few days as well. We'll get to that in a minute, but let's just first uh, take a little sweetener and have a look at sugar. I'm just whizzing in and out this, uh, this uh, chart to try and make the 200 day moving average. Uh, uh, there we go, it's filled out nicely. We've talked about this uh, giant head and shoulders top here. We achieved the target down and around these levels. This 12.5 12, this, uh, 12 level, which is our longer term support, was pretty much the target uh, for, for that uh, head and shoulders. We have seen a rally um, since then into, um, well, around the start of August. But since then, it's sort of been one-way traffic. 
Interestingly, once we, uh, this, this test here, this 100 day moving average, the, uh, the highs of the bounce from the lows uh, around 12.50 uh, failed ahead of that uh, 100 day moving average. So uh, from a technical perspective, this 100 day moving average at 14.87 on our charts um, represents a fairly significant longer term uh, resistance. And it's just a little hard to get really bullish um, if you're a chartist, unless uh, we see uh, a, 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 a daily close and consolidation above this line. So what has actually um, occurred here in the sugar market? Well, it's all about Brazil, to be honest. So uh, Brazil's actually had uh, very dry weather, and uh, dry weather means um, much higher yields in sugar. Brazil is one of the major producers of uh, sugar in the world, and uh, so when uh, with the size of their harvest or potential harvests can have a meaningful impact, if you like, uh, on perceptions of, of the price of sugar. So warm weather in Brazil equals more sugar, um, equals more sugar on the world market, equals lower prices. So if you're looking to uh, clog up your arteries, this could be the time to do it. Let's go to uh, corn. Now, as we go through the grains, I'm calling this uh, the charts Grainageddon. And um, the reason uh, we, we, I'm calling it Grainageddon is all down to the US Department of Agriculture. They put out a report which is called the WANSA report. Now, I don't know what that uh, actually stands for, but actually it's their predictions for uh, global harvests and for the US harvests um, uh, for most of the, uh, the, 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 the soft commodities, your corn, soybeans, wheat, uh, etc etc and what it came out with on Friday was a massively uh, Thursday night actually our time uh, a massively high prediction of global harvests and also US harvests and all of these base uh, agricultural products what happened then of course is that all the traders headed for the door this large downline here um, and actually a lot of the futures themselves were actually limit down on the day before managing to pick themselves up off the floor. Quite significantly here though for uh, corn, it's held this uh, 371.30 area. And I'm calling that an almost triple top, it's definitely a double top. But if we look at this little line, let's uh, widen this out a little bit, shall we? We've almost one, two, three. It's a triple top, so this becomes quite significant uh, resistance. We've also fallen through the 100 and most importantly, the 200 day moving average, this blue line, which has actually not been tested uh, since uh, early in 2017. And when we've got to the bottom here, we've, the bounce has been held by the 200 day moving average. Now that 200 day moving average is sitting at 3.60 today, uh, or close enough for government work anyway. So this also becomes quite important resistance now. Perhaps the 100 doesn't really mean so much at the moment, but the fact that we've fallen through the 200, bounced and held the 200 day moving average is a fairly negative uh, technical development, but it also means that this is actually quite an important pivot point as well as being resistance. We are sitting mid range today. Um, next major support is this line around here, uh, 349, uh, which is uh, the lows way back here in uh, April. And I think uh, if uh, 349 breaks and consolidates, um, underneath that level, and that may imply that there is more pain ahead uh, on the corn side. Just one caveat on this, uh, part of the reason that we did have a bounce from the initial sell-off was in fact because uh, a lot of uh, players in the market didn't actually put much store in the uh, reliability of the USDA data, but certainly it seems to be still playing out. Let's pop over to soybeans. Again, you can see the same sort of setup, a limit down move on soybeans uh, on, uh, on, on that evening after that report came out. They said there's going to be a lot more soybeans. Prices fell. I haven't noticed uh, the price of a uh, soya uh, free range organic fair trade latte falling here in Singapore, but maybe uh, that will change in, in the months to come if the prices stay this way. Nevertheless, we can see here 
again, it had fallen in the previous days and then rallied ahead of that report, but failed at this 200 day moving average, which is around 985.70 today. So that will be quite important, uh, pivotal, uh, quite an important pivot level. It'll be resistance initially, and if it breaks, it would imply that we're going to see higher levels. But in the meantime, back to reality here, uh, major resistance now at uh, this, uh, this last week's high, uh, around uh, 980.20. Uh, we've fallen through the 100 day moving average now, and we're consolidating underneath it in sort of like a bear, a bear flag pattern. We have to wait and see how that one develops if this turns into a flag. If it does, then from a technical perspective, a break out of the bottom of the flag would mean it should fall as far as the length of the flagpole. And as we can see here, um, that would be about, I would say, uh, 50 cents. So that would imply a target uh, way down uh, below uh, nine, nine cents. So um, nine dollars, sorry. In the meantime, we have some intraday resistance around 9.40. This 9.2290, 9.23 level now becomes very important support. And a break of this would mean an initial move. Uh, from a technical perspective, could be down to around this sort of 896.60 region, which is this low here in, uh, in June. Um, from the RSI point of view, we're still not really moved into oversold territory. Um, so uh, that implies that there is still plenty of room to the downside with new sellers anyway. But uh, certainly uh, traders need to keep a look on this, uh, this 9.3, 9.2290 region um, for, for further clues as to what that price action is going to be. Moving on to wheat. Well, wheat's actually already been in a bit of a down move. And I think the last time I spoke, um, We'd, uh, we'd talked about uh, why wheat had already uh, fallen, and that is because although the forward-looking um, measures for uh, wheat harvests over the next uh, couple of years had implied that we'd, be, um, we'd, uh, we'd see much lower harvests, which is partially what was responsible for this crazy run higher. Uh, in the short term, which is where we all have to live our lives, the world is producing an awful lot of wheat, probably a bit more wheat than it needs. Again, uh, we've seen traders running for the door and we saw this whipsaw price action. Last week, this USDA, USDA report, we saw a, a massive fall here from around uh, like 4.53 all the way down to uh, nearly uh, 4.30, a Goliath move. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, in that process, sorry, we broke the support level at 4.42.90, which now becomes resistance. We also broke the 100-day moving average at 4.40.85 today. That also now becomes resistance. We have, on a more positive note, held the 200-day moving average, which is today sitting around 4.24.15. A bit of a tongue tied sometimes to pronounce all these numbers. Um, and perhaps we can take some heart if you happen to be um, bullish on wheat or you're looking to pick up some and go long. Uh, we can see that the RSI here is moving very, very close to uh, oversold levels. So perhaps for now, um, this 200 day moving average um, could hold uh, any further sell offs in the short term in wheat. But having said that, if it did actually break and have a daily close below it, that more than likely um, would imply that we could move down to 4.0320, this low in uh, May. And then the key long-term position uh, uh, support is this 393.70 region. But certainly it's been a rock and roll ride for uh, wheat and uh, the USDA uh, report has not helped that at all. So not the greatest look uh, for, um, for, for grains this week, uh, for, um, for agricultural products um, down to the USDA. And to be honest, this is uh, you know, weather and growing conditions. US Department of Agriculture do tend to throw a few spanners on the work uh, with, uh, with the agriculturals, but uh, that's just the sort of uh, um, the life that we have to live. Okay, well, that's enough of me um, chatting. I uh, hope you've got something useful out of this and uh, you've enjoyed this uh, short presentation. Uh, as I said, a lot of things going on in the world at the moment. Uh, Short term, I think, uh, particularly with the precious metals uh, and oil, we will be driven by geopolitical tensions and headlines out of uh, North Korea. So make sure that you do stay uh, focused on your news tickers 
um, over the course of this week because I don't think uh, that um, dynamic is uh, disappearing uh, anytime soon, unfortunately. I wish you all a fantastic week and happy trading. Thanks very much for listening and watching. Cheerio.